Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to focus on uh, core unit 1, it's physical geography and we're going to look at the different types of plate boundaries. Okay, so we're going to look at the different types of plate boundaries and the very first thing you need to know is that there's uh, three main types of plate boundaries. And these are called constructive, so you've got constructive plate boundaries, you've got destructive plate boundaries, and you have conservative plate boundaries. So here we have um, three different uh, images, and these three different images represent the three different types of plate boundary. This one here, where, where the plates are pulling apart, is what we call a constructive plate boundary. This one here, where the plates are actually colliding and in, and in collision with each other, um, is what we call a destructive plate boundary. And this plate here, when the two plates are sliding past each other, are the plate, are, are we call uh, conservative plate boundaries. Okay, so I've just labelled each one of these just to make it clear. So this the constructive plate boundary is this one here. The destructive plate boundary is the middle one. And the conservative plate boundary is when the two, pla uh, two plates are sliding past each other. So we're going to look at each of these uh, plate boundaries and we're going to look at the key features for each uh, plate boundary. So we'll start off with the constructive plate boundary. So the first thing that you need to know about the constructive plate boundary is that the plates are pulling apart. So we'll say plates pulling Apart. So they're not in collision with each other, they're pulling them apart, and sometimes they're known as divergent. Okay, so I'll just make that then. Sometimes they're known as divergent plate boundaries because they're uh, pulling away. So just make sure you know that word as well. So divergent. The next, the next uh, key feature is that in the mantle, uh, there's convection currents, and the convection currents is what is what is causing the plates to pull apart. So the convection currents new rock is going to be formed because the plates are pulling apart and as the magma rises up it's going to then uh, solidify and form new rock. Another thing that you need to know is that you get volcanoes So you get volcanoes at constructive plate boundaries. Um, and these are usually shield volcanoes that you get. So shield volcanoes. Uh, an example of where this happens is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And Iceland would be a good example to, to use because the Mid-Atlantic Ridge runs uh, straight through Iceland and Iceland has lots and lots of uh, volcanoes and lots of shield volcanoes and lots of new rock has been formed there so it's a good example to use. The next we're going to look at is uh, destructive plate boundaries okay. So destructive plate boundaries is where plates um, collide with each other. So plates collide so they're in collision uh, with each other so as you can see the two plates are crashing um, against each other and one of the plates may be subducted uh, if it's um, an oceanic plate and the other plate is a uh, continental. Um, the reason why I say it may be is because there's three uh, types of destructive plate boundaries. Um, so there's three types of destructive plate boundaries. And they all depend on if it's a continental and a continental meeting each other. We could have a continental and an oceanic plate meeting each other, or we could have an oceanic and and ocean uh, an oceanic plate and um, in collision with each other. I'll speak more about that uh, later on. Um, but just what you need to know is that there's three types of destructive plate boundaries. Um, an example of a destructive plate boundary would be the Nazca plate. So the Nazca plate is in collision with the South American plate. So 
So that's your example. The plates are moving because of convection currents. So convection currents are the, re is, are the reason for the plates uh, coming into collision with each other because the convection currents is the movement within the, the mantle. At destructive plate boundaries, when you have oceanic and oceanic colliding and continental and oceanic, what we'll get is a zone that we call subduction zone. So we get a subduction zone. And this is just when the rock is forced to, to, uh, and sorry, when the plate is forced is forced to go down underneath the other plate, and what happens is it sub subducts, it starts to melt, um, the rock starts to melt because it's being forced down, and because of the great pressure and heat, subduction occurs. You get volcanoes, so volcanoes are present at uh, destructive plate boundaries, and you can get. Uh, really destructive volcanoes such as composite volcanoes an example of that would be Mount Etna in Sicily in Italy um, you can get ash and, and, cylinder, and cinder volcanoes um, and you can also get dome volcanoes um, an example of that one would be Mount St Helens in the USA at these structure plate boundaries you also get earthquakes so earthquakes are present And the last uh, feature that you need to know that is present at destructive plate boundaries that can be present are fold mountains. So fold mountains. And fold mountains occur when you have continental and continental plates in collision with each other and that causes another plate to subduct. So basically you get uh, the plates end up buckling up and forming uh, fold mountains. An example would be the Himalayas. The last plate boundary that we're going to look at is conservative and conservative um, is sometimes known as as passive plate boundary or sometimes it's known as transform and sometimes it's known as neutral. So just be careful in case you see that on the exam and you're not sure. When it's if it asks you like a neutral plate boundary or transform or passive, it's this it just and they're just al alternative words for conservative, and the conservative plate boundary is when plates slide past each other and cause a lot of friction, um where the plates are actually in collision, and where they're actually sliding past each other. Just one thing to note: they don't have to always be um going in in opposite directions. They can actually be going in the same direction, and what will happen is where they actually meet each other. The, if one plate is, say that this plate here is traveling at a faster speed than the than this plate, what will happen is it'll cause friction along the plate, and that is also known as a conserved plate boundary. Okay, so just one thing to note is that they don't always have to be traveling in opposite directions. If they are traveling in opposite directions, however, you do tend to get um a lot like more severe uh, friction, and uh, you tend to get worse er er type of earthquakes. Okay. So, um, what we call where plates uh, actually meet each other, okay, we're actually in collision, and um, where they're sliding past here, we call it these transform faults. Transform faults. Uh, an example you need to know is a San Andreas, San Andreas fault. And a San Andreas fault is in um, California. Okay, so it's along the, the west coast of America. One thing you need to know here is that a uh, rock is neither being created or destroyed at this type of plate boundary. Whereas in the constructive plate boundary, rock has been uh, like new rock has been created and land has been created. Here, land is being destroyed because rock is, is, is being subducted beneath. And in this one, uh, no rock um, is being created or destroyed. A feature of conserved plate boundaries is earthquakes. So they do suffer from lots of earthquakes because of the friction that's built up along the transform fault. And they do tend to suffer from shallow earthquakes, which are usually more severe um, because basically it means that the, 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 the focus is, is shallow, so it's not very uh, deep within the crust. Uh, so it's very close to the Earth's surface, the epicenter, um, where it's first felt. And this causes more severe 
earthquakes. Okay, so that's it for today's tutorial on the three types of plate boundaries. Um, if you look at my next tutorial, I'll, I'll go into the, the three different uh, destructive plate boundaries that we have. And you can also find lots more videos on the website examrevision.ie. So please do check it out. Thank you.